third verse memorized? I need these Raise notes. your hand if you have two. Yeah. Raise your hand if you have three.
when she was young, and she's still young, that I've been around a long, long time. I have been preaching, I've been sharing God's word all over the place for over 50 years.
Do you see what's left? There's a scar that sometimes will never go away. If we say something to someone else and we hurt somebody's feelings, today they call it bullying. Being mean to somebody else, that can become a bad habit. We can do things with four other people who are against other people. It's more fun when it's three against one. Hey, you're pretty sure you're going to win. But what about that one person? Do you know any perfect people? No. Oh, yes. Who's perfect? God's perfect. Anybody else? Yeah. Jesus is perfect. He did absolutely nothing wrong. Yet he experienced problems. He, just, he experienced disappointments. Jesus was a human being. He was a baby. We saw him teaching at age 12 in God's Word. And we saw him in God's word become a person who was a leader. He came to John, John the Baptist, and he said, I want to be baptized by you. And after he was baptized, a very phenomenal thing happened. A very important and unique thing happened. The people that were there heard. They heard a voice coming from somewhere. And it was the voice of God Almighty saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus was God's son. Jesus still is God's son. Jesus lived a perfect life. He tried to help people get rid of their bad habits. Does anybody complain? Anybody complain? Complain about the food? Complain about the homework? Complain about being sick? Complain about having to stay in your room? Complain about this, complain about that, yeah. Complaining is a bad habit. And I've got a bracelet at home that has the words on it that says, Complaint Free World. And I tried something and I did not make it. I failed. I wore that bracelet. And I wore that bracelet, and I wore that bracelet again. What I had to do was every time I find myself complaining, I had to move it from this arm to this arm. Then I complained again, I moved it from this arm to this wrist. And back and forth, every time I complained, I had to change hands. Until I broke it. It's a known fact that approximately in three weeks' time, you can get rid of a bad habit if you work at it. But I want to read a, a verse of scripture to you. It comes from the book of James. A world of unrighteousness 
The tongue is set among our members. By the way, yeah, stick out your tongue. Yeah. yeah. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting it on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, it could be tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame your tongue. Only you have control of it. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father. And with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things are not to be. Do you know what swearing is? Do you know what swearing is? Raise your hand if you know what swearing is. It's not nice, is it? But you know, some people say bad things out of their mouth when they turn around and they eat food. And I'm surprised that they would eat with the same mouth that that bad stuff comes out of. Bad habits are talked about in life. Things that need to be gotten rid of. If you have a thing, if you think about reading, there's a fun passage to read. It's from the book of Galatians. Now I want to share some Bible truth with you. We're living in a very unique age. And my God is a loving God. Does he love you? Yes. I can hear you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Another verse, God's love. Beloved, let us love one another. For God, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God. God, uh, and they know God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's a loving God. He loves everybody. He loves every single person. He loves green people, black people, orange people, purple people, brown people, black people, white people. He loves people from all over the world. People from China. People from Bangladesh. People from Pleasant Hill, Ohio. People from North Hills, Ohio. Yeah. Do you know that they even have a, a city named after some lady named Helen? I think that's Helen of Troy. They have God loves people from Troy. But God loves people from Minnesota. God loves people in California. God loves people who have red hair. Green hair and no hair. Yes, I feel your pain. You're part of the Brotherhood of the Dome. God loves straight people. God loves gay people. But all sin needs to be forgiven because God is love. But I'm going to read you something else about my God. My God is a rock. His word is perfect. All his ways are justice. 
God is faithful and without iniquity, amen, just and upright is he. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness goes before him. God is just. God does not like sin. And God, what happened to Noah? What happened to Noah? He built a boat. What happened to all the millions and millions of people who weren't on the boat? Yeah, they died. Why? Because they disobeyed. God had to judge them. Listen carefully. God had to judge them because of their sin. So God is love, but God is also just. God is also right. And so when you come to God, and some of the songs talked about forgiveness, that was good. And some of the songs talked about love, but that was good. One of the songs talked about being baptized, and that is good. But when you're baptized, you have to stop being the bully on the block and give up your bad habits. That's something you need to remember. I have one little boy, and it's probably been 20 years ago. Matter of fact, I was at worship when it happened. And you know what? He wanted to be baptized. I was so thrilled. His family was so thrilled. So I sat him down and I asked, why? And he told me why. And then I told him, I said, you know, once you're baptized, you can't be the bully on the block. You've got to change. That young man changed his mind and, and did not get baptized. Because he did not want to give up his old habit. It's going to cost you something. If you want to be a Christian, if you want to be like Christ, you can and you'll become a new creature. But you've got to give up bad habits. You've got to give up bullying. You've got to give up the things that the world thinks are fun. You don't go out to drink and get drunk. You stay away from drugs. God made you a boy and God made you a girl. And that's the way you are. There's no need in trying to find out or having somebody else tell you you're not good enough. You should be somebody else. Because that's the original sin. Note if you ever thought about that. When the serpent tempted Eve, the serpent lied. And the serpent said, if you eat that forbidden fruit, you won't die. You'll be like God. The serpent said, you're not good enough the way God made you. You could be better if you change. She listened. And she found out the devil lied. The serpent lied. The enemy lied. God was true. God said you can live forever. If you don't touch that fruit and that on that tree. If you do, you'll die. Do people die? Yes. Yes, they do. And I have been around so much death. I used to work 
at a funeral, I've been around it. I've seen bad stuff. It pays off to live a good life. It pays off to give up good, give up the bad habits. Sometimes it can be lonely, but guess what? You plus God are the joy. Is there an amen for that? I do. Amen. That's right. God loves you. God loves you. And people all over the world are going to tell you God is a loving God and He is. Believe that. But don't forget, God demands people to give up bad habits and to repent and to change their life. So when somebody comes into a, into a fellowship and you want to include them and you want to welcome them and you want them to be a part of your group, when it comes to the church, that person has to become like Jesus. He doesn't come in and change all the people who are like Jesus to become evil. No. God loves all sinners, but the sinner is still a And that's the message that I have for you tonight. God loves every one of you, but remember, He's also just. And just as God sent the flood, Someday, Jesus is going to come again. I'm looking forward to that day. Jesus is coming again. The Bible says Jesus is coming again. There were two men that stood by the apostles, and they said when Jesus ascended, they were staring up into the sky with awe and wonder and that those men said, why do you stand staring into the sky? This same Jesus that's taken up from you, he's going to come back the same way. The thing is, we don't know when. And you don't want to be caught unaware. That's like knowing that somebody special is going to come to your house. And instead of staying home, you decide to go out with a bunch of people and have fun. And while you're away, your friend came and you weren't there. That's what it'd be like when Jesus returns to we unprepared. We need to live every day that Jesus is going to come today. Give you part of what I want to close. If Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came unexpectedly, I wonder what you do. Would you invite him in and welcome him like you're very and let him meet your very closest friends? Or would you hope that they would stay away until his visit ends? Would you let him know the things you read? Would you let him know the things on which your spirit feeds? And would you say you find it hard each day to say table grace? Would you be glad to have him come and stay with you and meet your very closest friends? What about the books you read? The songs you like to sing, the things you like to watch on TV. 
over you? Is the family Bible loud or would you have to throw some magazines or some shut your phone off so you would see what's on social media? Would you be glad to have him stay forever? On and on? No. Or sigh, sigh of great relief when finally he had gone. You know, it might be interesting to know what you would do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with you. Father in heaven, I thank you for these beautiful young people, for their energy, their talent, their desire to love and live. I thank you for this camp staff that's willingly giving their time out of love for them. And I pray that each counselor will be Jesus to these young people. And may they, each one, take a little bit of Jesus home with them and learn that bad habits need to be gone. And I want to live for Jesus. We pray for his coming, pray that it will be soon. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.